If you like ghost stories, check out shop.biography.com. You'll find your favorite celebrity ghost stories, a haunting collection of books, and even a ghost hunting kit. Shop.biography.com. These happy days are yours and mine. These happy days are yours and mine. Happy days. You know, Marion, Happy Days really was a big hit, but it took some adjustments to really make the show fly. You know, a big change was taping in front of a live audience. Originally, the show was conceived as a single camera comedy. MASH was a single camera comedy. The Andy Griffith Show had been single camera comedy. I was very, very comfortable with that. We loved it because it was like making a movie and you can do a very subtle kind of acting in one camera. The show was not doing very well. So we were going to take one last chance, and that was doing it in front of a live audience. There was a certain challenge and excitement to doing it in front of an audience. Um, it's a little bit more like doing a play. Well, it scared the hell out of me. I didn't mind the idea. I, you know, I mean, I didn't protest the notion, but I'd never d been in front of an audience. I'd never done anything in front of an audience. Tonight's Happy Days was filmed before a live audience. All right, now this Sunday, something very special is going to happen, and uh, some of you are going to be invited. Really, I wanted to throw up before the show. I was never so frightened in my life. Fonz, what's up? You, you a little nervous, huh? You want some advice? <laughs> it was just a joke. I didn't feel like I was in control of what I was doing. I wasn't relaxed at all. I was just kind of getting through it. This happens to be a list of the qualifications of a perfect wife. This is a biggie. Must be untried. All oh, right, untried. Five. What's untried? Dummy. It means she's never been in court. It means that she's got to be pure. She's got to be a virgin. Virgin. <laughs> But get through it, I did, and it was exciting to hear those laughs. Just don't get mad, but uh, how can you be sure about that, uh, w well, the uh, number four? Yeah. yeah. About her being a virgin? Yeah. yeah. She told me. <laughs> Six. Well, couldn't she have lied? <laughs> Come here. Virgins don't lie. <laughs> Ron Howard was fantastic in front of a live audience. So they moved it inside onto stage 19, and we were now going to do it for 300 people Friday nights. It was intense, and we never looked back. Everybody gets scared. If you're going to survive in this world, you just can't show it all the time, that's all. Yeah, but you never get scared. I know, that's why I'm the fun. <laughs> I think that the show became a big hit, really, uh, when Henry's role was expanded. I guess one of the big episodes was when Fonzie, you know, jumped the barrels on his motorcycle. And what's so funny, if you think about it, it's beyond corny, but there was something so magical about Henry and his character. It just became the evil Knievel of his time. I mean, there's something, people wanted heroes and he was it. started doing things that nobody could do, snap his fingers and the world would stop or whatever. Limit. Fonzie became a full-blown character, and the live audiences at Happy Days cheered when he just walked on. He didn't say anything yet. He got powers. 
he would hit the jukebox, the music would come on, or he'd hit it and it would go off. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. <laughs> Anyone would say, oh my God, come on. Well, not, no, no, no. Not, not with Happy Days and not with the Fonz, it worked. I was in the alleyway with Richie, and I hit the side of a building. <laughs> Just, the, the whole building was the, you just, how, how did you do that? It's a gift. And then being in the forest and not being able to sleep because all the animals were making noise and chattering with each other. Cool it! the entire forest silent for the fawns to go to sleep. Let's see Tarzan do that. It doesn't get much cooler than that. Introducing the man who is fighting the never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way, the Fonz! Fonzie soon became a national hero, and so the uh, National Library Association said, could you get kids to read a little more? They won't read. Before I knew what was happening, Fonz. before I knew what was happening, I was applying for my own library card and checking out my very first book. Well, he discovered that. How cool is this? Anybody can get a library card and go in and, and get a book. You went to the library all those years and, and you never got a card? No, I never thought they'd give it to a guy like me. But do you know there's a card for everybody? <laughs> That's right. Everybody is allowed to read. Registration for library cards went up 500% in America because the font said that one line. I tell you, the font's work is never done. <laughs> Just the power of a man on a TV set is pretty strong if you got the right character and the right actor. What a classic car. I think we did a kissing scene in it. Yes, I still have a door handle impression in my back. Well, they didn't call it happy days for nothing. <laughs> Someone, somewhere, always seemed to be getting a little frisky. Uh -oh. As soon as you feel comfortable with Shirley, you say, okay, Fonz, huh? And I will peel off a of Laverne up to my little penthouse. Okay, Fonz. Hey, he says, okay, let's no. go, Laverne. I was wondering if you could settle a bet that my friends and I have. We each bet five bucks on what flavor lipstick you're wearing. Which is it? Well, why don't you figure it out for yourself? <laughs> Strawberry. You're dealing with the normal, the normal kind of dating patterns of teenage boys in high school. Now I'm desperate. Can you set me up, Ralph? Oh, sure. I got a great girl for you. Who? Her name's Marlene. What if she has a date? Who would date Marlene? <laughs> I fell in love and got a big crush on Potsy. Put your head on my shoulder. I, I really loved, personally loved doing that show. Putsy is singing uh, in the show, and Jody loved it. And she couldn't, uh, are you kidding? <sighs> loved it. Put your head on my shoulder. You know, young love, that puppy kind of love is just endearing. And the writers captured it so well. Now, Johnny, why don't you go in the kitchen with your folks? Yeah, well, why don't you go in there and see what they're doing? Maybe they'd like to watch television. Richie's gonna neck. Richie's gonna neck. Well, you guys are really miss. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> are you getting frisky? <laughs> it's only Thursday. <laughs> do you suppose that Howard and Marion were the first? TV frisky couple. Who else in the show at that time is going to have a sexual relationship? It would have to be the parents. What are you doing home this time of day? Well, is there anything wrong with a man coming home to his beautiful wife for lunch or whatever? <laughs> Howard, are you getting frisky? We had one show where I did think I was losing my allure, you know, and the script says, Marion comes down the stairs in a harem outfit, and she does a belly dance. Oh, how about a great Marion? Oh, that's it! Fit rough with me! <laughs> no, no, I'm not laughing at you, Marion, will you go out and feed the camel? I 
always thought it was so adorable when they would chase each other up the stairs. You know, we were doing the same thing 20 years ago tonight. <laughs> Only then we were running. <sighs> I saw this movie, Bugsy Malone, and I said, I like that little one. He was like 10. I said, he's going to be a sexy kid, that one. Gary said, do you want to be on Happy Days? I think it was the biggest show on television at the time. I don't even know what the heck they wanted me on the show for. And I, you know, what do you, no. <laughs> Scott Baio was amazing because he came on and became this incredible psychic. I want you to have this. An old mechanic hat? Don't you make fun of a historical monument. <laughs> this is my first hat. Oh, your first hat? Can I keep it? Yeah. It was the best, because here he was the same age. Um, I had someone that I could relate to. Chachi, oh, we have a nice little souvenir for you. Joni. Oh, Joni, just what I always wanted. <laughs> Not me score this. He became the younger version of Richie and Fonzie could give him advice and then give Richie advice. But school's a drag. Hey, let me tell you something. You trust me. School is cool. You say so. I say so. Scott became a huge heartthrob for teenage girls and sort of a younger version of Fonzie. It was like, you know, the second coming. <laughs> <laughs> two girls? Yeah, two to one. I love the odds. <laughs> Somebody said, let's do a show with these two kids singing. And again, I said, I don't sing. Please don't do that to me. That's what they did. Well, shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Scott started off as Fonzie's cousin and built into the new teen sensation of the show. Took over the spot. Boy, did he take over the spot. He's getting bigger than life, and the girls are going nuts. I mean, it was very Beatlesque in my mind, which is a really cool thing. So my experience was, was great. I mean, it was... Uh... Couldn't have been better. Fonzie, sit on it. <laughs> what did I just hear? I said we need some catchphrases. E. He said, yes, the writers, and they sent me a list every week. And I said, sit on it, it's not bad, let's try that. Oh, sit on it, Potsy. Sit on it, Howard. Sit on it, Potsy. Hey! Oh, Howard, what am I gonna do with this? Knit on it, Marion. Gary got the idea that we could have other catchphrases. Well, I'll tell you something, buckos. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I still got it. I was the first one to say nerd on TV. Gee, Potsy, you should act this nice all the time. Then people wouldn't think you're such a nerd. You call me a nerd. I have known you all these years, Fonz. You have never, ever called me that. But Joni, he's a nerd. I'll take credit. I, the one thing I did come up with was Mr. and Mrs. C. Hi, Mr. C. Oh, Mr. C, this is the best dinner I've ever had. Goodbye, Mr. C, Mrs. C. Hey, Mr. C. Hey, Mr. C. We used to think this is getting a little ridiculous. Now they're just reaching for you know anything they can find and just trying to force it into becoming a catchphrase. Yowza, yowza. Up. He's such a hunk. Cheerleaders. Wah, wah, wah. It came from what, what, what. And I would go, wah, wah, what? That's where it came from. Me and Blue Eyes. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. I am not going to leave wah, wah, wah and Blue Eyes alone. <laughs> we tried this great gimmick after a while where we put a bandana around Scott Bayo's leg, so everybody would copy that. Well, we looked, and nobody seemed to be copying it. But to this day, I meet kids who say, I had to put that stupid red bandana on my leg because you put that in the show. There are lots more Happy Days memories, bloopers, and clips ahead, so don't go away. And children, don't sit too close to the TV. You'll damage your eyes. These happy days.